She on Sani don't confirm and say the demand of labor until you see say he they legit. Hi, correct, correct people. We greet you now. Welcome now to DJ MTV on our WhatsApp channel. With the summer on our with open girl updates, breaking news, updated updates. So I beg my people. If you never subscribe to our YouTube channel, we could rush now. We could go subscribe and also turn on that notification bell. So at any time we like say we drop any update like this, we could go get notified. Our Facebook page, my people, we could follow us and we could the like. We could do well. Anyway, my people, we could quickly run enter the story and updates. We will carry on for now like this. Yes, so my people, she uh, she on Sunday when be President Civil Rights Congress of Nigeria. Don't talk concerning the ongoing protest by Labour and TUC. According to Ram, he talk say what did Labour they demand? Say it they right and legitimate. And he say he never see say government directly they object the demand of Labour and say this the, the demand say now what did government fee achieve immediately? But the problem be say nobody they on ground, no platform there to even address the matter. <laughs> anyway, my people, I will leave on now. Make couldn't watch this interview where. She also need to do with arise and hear all what he talk for his side. We could not watch. Um, from my own understanding, the contention is about the removal of subsidy and the consequences of that removal. We all know very well that in the last four decades, government has been subsidizing uh, Nigeria's petroleum product, especially the one that has been imported. And this has to do with the fact that we are unable to get our refineries working and for that reason a PMS or otherwise known as petrol has to be imported and then uh, sold at the local market. Now this government has done what other government were not able to achieve. That was, that is, is that it was able to bring an end to the subsidy regime and not that it brought an end to subsidy regime but for the fact that in, it inherited uh, a, a, a budgetary system where no provision was made for subsidy and that was deliberately done by the last administration now <clears throat> I think the labor and the government have come to terms on agreeing that uh, for the first time that subsidy has to go but where the problem come in is on the implementation of palliative measures and actions that need to be taken to alleviate or reduce the consequences as a result of this removal. And from what I know, that there were a dialogue and negotiation between government and labor. But for the fact that the government is just coming to office and you cannot pinpoint a minister that will be held responsible. Under the Buhari regime, we know that it was Ngige. But now the government is still at its infant stage and there wasn't any specific person to uh, drive in the process. And as such, it now resulted to uh, the problem we face ourselves. Uh, after the first withdrawal and the skyrocketed increase in prices of petroleum product, uh, there were negotiations that took place. But you cannot specifically pinpoint uh, areas of agreement and how those things can be articulated. And I believe still it has to do with the fact that the government is still in the process of forming itself. But now, um, from what has happened when labor said they visited the villa and they were left unattended from 3 to 6 p.m i know very well that uh, uh, something is going to come up but what i believe was that there was sincere effort from the side of labor uh, to negotiate and i believe also uh, government knew the consequences of it and they too have to negotiate, but there need to be someone whom you will pinpoint and say this is the person who is heading the process. You can't put a chief of staff to negotiate on behalf of the government. You can't put the spokesperson of the government to negotiate. You need a ministry, you need a minister which is absent. 
So uh, that led to where we are. But I think it's still something that can be salvaged because there are two ways the labor could have acted. The first is this protest and the second is shutting down services nationwide. And I've not seen the second option been taken because if it is going to be the second option, all the affiliate labor groups could have issued statements from the day for yesterday to yesterday that we are shutting down the airports, we are shutting down electricity, we are shutting down health services, we are shutting down the judiciary, but it has not taken place. So I believe that uh, the labor for now are sending a message that uh, this is less flex our muscles for you to see uh, the need for us to go back to the negotiating table. But I believe things will be better when the government has finally takes a full shape and there is a minister, there are ministers and a committee is seriously set up with people responsible and can sit down and articulate these issues. The presidential speech uh, came with a lot of promises and pledges of uh, investing uh, money, pumping in money to the agri sector, to small businesses, to all those things here. But you still need somebody to articulate this and a committee between labor and government headed by a minister to see all these things here uh, implemented. So I, I think the mistake the government has done was that the period it took uh, before the swearing in, uh, having known that there is not going to be a uh, subsidy, uh, that could have been a period where uh, there should be a roadmap on tackling the consequences of uh, withdrawal of subsidy, but that was not done. So almost everything was just done like an afterthought. Uh, there is no subsidy, so what do we do? They will grab here, release, pick here, release, uh, do this thing, and, and then there was just no, no coordination in what they are doing. But I, I think uh, protest is a fundamental right in democracy. Uh, they have come out to protest, and uh, I believe those there are people who I'm seeing also protesting in support of uh, the removal of the subsidy. It's all part of our democratic right. But after this, uh, they should go back to the negotiating table. Uh, for me, I've been one that in the last three decades I've always participated in a defense of subsidy. But at a certain time, uh, questions are asked. Uh, we pay subsidy in millions under Babangida administration, then it now catapulted to billions, then hundreds of billions, Senator and then Sunny, trillions, and then I'd we reach like a point under here, Buhari please. administration that yes. we have to borrow to subsidize. Yes. All right, because of our time, please permit me to ask another question and then you can finish it. It would, it would probably link into the question I'm about to ask you. It's with regards to the demands of labor. Right. It has been criticized as being not um, realistic, holding water, and I'd like to get your evaluation of some of their key demands, one of which is, um, or, or has been said to be a review, upward review of the minimum wage. Another is the repair of the uh, refineries in Nigeria. Another one is that of the um, reversal, or at least back to status quo, of the price hike of petroleum price, at least until the government is able to make some form of decision or provide a cushion for, um, you know, for, for the poorest in the country. What's your take on the demands? Do you think it was well thought out? Is it, is it unrealistic? Should Labour have brought something else to the table? Is that why the government is unable to meet them um, in terms of agreed to their terms? What's your take on some of their key demands? Well, um, the demands of Labour are legitimate. And I, from my own understanding, have not seen the government uh, directly objecting to the demands of Labour. But where you have a communication gap is lack of coordination. For example, when you talk of uh, increase in wages, I have read somewhere where the government has said they will increase wages. When you talk of refineries, uh, I have read many times where the GMD of NMP, NMPCL has made pledges that they are working on that. 
But the problem is that there are short times things that can be done. Like repair of refineries cannot be done within 24 hours, one month, two months, or five months. Uh, these are structures that have been abandoned for many years and many of them have been vandalized. That will take time. And if we say we have to put the refineries in order before we now take any action, I think it will take almost 70% uh, of the period of this administration. So uh, when you have a team uh, set up, now all these demands can be put on the table. I said these are the things we can achieve immediately, like increase in wages, we can achieve them. And then secondly, uh, providing um, finance for conversion of our vehicles from petroleum to gas. And then uh, the next has to do with direct financial support uh, for Nigerians. Uh, and I think where it simply is the communication uh, dislocation as it is now. Uh, what labels are demanding is, is right, but also what the government is saying they will implement. Then where is the problem? I think the problem has to do with that there is virtually no platform for these uh, issues to, to be addressed. And I think uh, this is a challenge to uh, uh, President Bolatinu. Uh, where we are today is the position where uh, Tenubu and other progressive forces have been. For many times, I, the civil society, the civil rights groups, the political class have led protests against removal of subsidy under right from Babangida's time to Obasanjo's time, and then to even Jonathan period, many of us were in the forefront. And I believe the person who is the president today, uh, he is a major founder of protests and major organizer of protests and also a protest leader. So uh, this is the culture, this is the tradition which they have entrenched. And today they are on the other side of the battle line, which now they have to grapple with the reality of it. So I, I believe that the demands are all achievable. The only thing is uh, somebody needs to facilitate and articulate this, and it can only be done when the government is fully formed. Well, yeah, so my people, hmm, now you're waiting this small talk. She owns an don't talk and finish, you not be small. My people, how I see this, so my son, I'm reason I'm making a drop in a comment, so I'm making a don't forget to like and share. DJ. DJ. <laughs>